Oh, hi. I'm Charles Young, and I collect radioactive rocks. Some of you may have even seen my videos of finding rare earth crystals in the field. I will provide a link to those below. Now, as part of the hobby, it's useful to be able to fix Geiger counters and scintillation survey meters. Recently, I've been acquiring non-working units and bringing them back to life. I'm going to share with you general techniques for troubleshooting these instruments. And in particular, I will demonstrate the repair of an Eberlein E530. Frequently, the only thing that is wrong with these instruments is mechanical rather than electrical. A very common problem is that the batteries can leak if left in the meter for a long time. The resulting corrosion can damage the battery holder as well as affect the operation of other mechanical parts. In particular, the range switch may become unreliable. Also, the calibration pots may develop dead spots, making adjustments difficult. The solution to these mechanical issues is to simply spray a contact cleaner on the part work it back and forth a few times until it starts to work better and then you're good to go. Frequently this and restoring the battery contacts may be the only thing wrong with the meter. If fixing the mechanical problems does not fix the instrument we must delve into the electronics. For that you will need at least an oscilloscope, a digital voltmeter, uh, and of course, a soldering station. It is also handy to have a high voltage probe like the Fluke 80K40 to measure the high voltage directly. If you don't have one of these, there's still a cheap and dirty way to verify that at least the high voltage is working. This involves using a Geiger Mueller tube and the oscilloscope. When the GM tube discharges, it creates an RF signal that can be picked up by the high impedance probe of the oscilloscope, and it looks like this. This meter is actually a variation of the E530, called the E520, and it has a GM tube built into the base. If I put a radioactive specimen next to the GM tube, the, the oscilloscope probe picks up the signal just by placing it next to the GM tube. There you go, you can see the, you can see the signal right there. <clears throat> this tells us that the HV is working and that it is only necessary to follow the signal through the instrument to fix a non-working meter. These old meters are frequently made of just discrete components and they all have similar circuitries. There's a high voltage supply that provides the voltage going to the probe. The signal coming back from the probe is decoupled from the HV using a high voltage capacitor. This resulting signal is fed into the amplifier that conditions and stretches the signal according to the RC time constant of the selected range. The stretch signal charges a capacitor that is then discharged through the meter whose reading reflects the balance between the charging and the discharging. So that is the overview of how these meters work. Let's look in more detail at the circuit of the Eberlein E530. The decoupled signal arrives at the base of Q4 and the inverted signal emerges on the collector at R10. This gets fed into the second stage of the amplifier at the base of Q5 and emerges inverted again at the collector. The signal is decoupled and input into the base of Q6 which is biased into cutoff 
so that its output is near zero volts when no signal is present. This strong signal is then stretched using the monostable multivibrator formed by the two NOR gates of the integrated circuit A1. The width of the resulting trigger pulse is controlled by the RC time constant of the selected range. This pulse is for the times 10 range, and the second is for the times one. You can see how it stretches the pulse. The trigger pulse is then fed into the driver transistor Q8, which is normally off so no current flows. When Q8 gets turned on by the pulse, it charges the capacitor C10, which then gets discharged through the meter M1. So, if you're following the signal through the circuit, and it disappears or becomes distorted at any stage, you might consider replacing the transistor at that stage. If the signal gets all the way to the meter charging capacitor and the meter still does not move, it could be that the contacts between the meter and the circuit board need to be cleaned. However, I knew this was not the problem with this meter because it has a battery check setting which showed that the meter works fine. So the only thing that was left was the response potentiometer. I determined that it had failed and was open. Since the original potentiometer is hard to come by, I bypassed it with a 5K resistor. And now the meter works perfectly. I was then able to calibrate each range to complete the task, bringing this meter back to life. So, if you have an old meter that doesn't work and has some knowledge of electronics, don't be afraid to troubleshoot it using the tips that I provided here. Good luck with your radiation hobby and go watch my videos on prospecting for radioactive rocks.